Hello, my name is Mr. Wright. I want to talk to you about the trumpet, uh, a brilliant sounding instrument that uh, is one of the most durable of all instruments that holds up really well under concert conditions and in outside marching band conditions because these valves are encased in such a way to protect them from the dust. Like a trombone slide, when you open it up, it, the dust kind of gets on that slide and t tends to tear up the slide like a little sandpaper in there. But uh, any type of valved instrument that's enclosed like this is, it fares a lot better when you go outside in dusty conditions. But um, let's talk about the 13 different places that need to be oiled and lubricated and greased. And I use different uh, oils and greases and uh, slide creams for each one, each of the different places. Uh, for instance, let's start off with the, uh, the valves. We're going to start with the first valve. And you want to oil these valves one at a time because you don't want to accidentally get this valve stuck into this one by accident. And then, of course, these tubes right here won't line up and do what they're supposed to do. So we're going to undo this valve cap right here and pull out this first one, this first valve. And it'll actually have a one stamped right there on the on different places on different valves. But what you do is you take like a soft, clean handkerchief and wipe off all the oil, old oil valve oil that's on there. And you just take some uh, valve oil. I like to use Alcas. It does a good job. And I put just a little bead of valve oil on there. And then I take my thumbs and I spread it out like butter on corn. Corn on the cob, you know. Get it all smooth. You don't want to use too much. And then we're going to put it right back inside the trumpet in that valve casing right there. And we're going to hold it down just a little bit like this and turn it clockwise until you hear this little click. Hopefully I'll hear a click. There he goes. Alright, then I'm going to keep holding it down. And I'm going to just tighten up this valve, this, uh, this cap right here. Now, another thing that I could do, and I'll do this on the next valve. This little valve right here, this could get stuck. It can get rusted in place along with the bottom one. So let's just do this on the bottom. I'm going to take this bottom uh, cap off right here. Because sometimes it's good to clean straight through with like a clean rod. with it Covered with a uh, soft cloth. You don't want to put metal against that. You don't want to scratch. But inside here on these threads, what I like to do is take a little bit of... Uh, tuning slide grease that you can get that usually comes with the trumpet or you can buy it at your store. I like to take just a little bit of uh, and I'm talking about just a little bit you may not even be able to see that Just that's a little bit too much actually but I'll rub some of the extras off. I'm going to wipe this inside these threads here on the opposite sides actually that's about right no. I'll wipe off the excess there and then you don't have to get it perfectly smooth around all of it because once you start putting it back on these threads uh, it'll spread out on its own. You don't want to ever force this. You don't want to strip these threads out. That would be bad. Bad idea. Alright. And that's nice and lubricated. That's not going to get stuck or rusted in place. And uh, you just repeat this process throughout all three valves. And again, it's best to do just one valve at a time, that way you don't get them mixed up. And then, um, now, you have your main tuning slide right here that you can use that same type of tuning grease on. Remember, we used the valve oil for the valves, for these pistons right here, and then we use tuning slide grease for uh, the caps to make sure that they don't get rusted in place. You can also use it on this main tuning slide right here. Let me show you where it's at. This one right there. Um, and your band director will help you get that in the right spot. I usually have to pull it out about a little over a quarter of an inch to get mine into it, almost a, almost a half an inch. And it's good to use a tuner. We'll go over that later as to how to get your certain pitches uh, in tune. But um, to lubricate that, again, you're going to just pull it off and wipe it off with a soft, clean hanky. Sometimes you can just use a tissue it's clean and not too doesn't have a whole lot of lint. Now put some tuna slide grease on there and you can just put it right on there. Well no, I'm gonna just use my finger. Make sure I get the right amount. And I'm not gonna I'm gonna use a little bit on both. You don't want to gunk it up because it'll get all gunked up inside your slide and that will dull your sound. We don't want that we don't want that. I'm gonna wipe it just smoothly across both of these shafts here 
to make it nice and even. I'm going to wipe off, I put a little bit too much. You want to wipe off the excess. You don't want a bunch of gunky stuff getting crammed up into your instrument. There we go. And now, when I put it back in, see this water key right here? It's just, it's where water can drain out, not not spit. They call it a spit valve. Some people call it a spit valve, but it's not really a spit valve. Um, very little spit even gets into the mouthpiece. Actually, it's condensation. Your warm, moist air blows through the instrument in these cold tubes, and it collects that the moisture from your breath collects on the inside of these tubes, and it just drains out by gravity, flowing to this. So you want this this spout right there to be at the lowest point. So as we put it back on the trumpet, we want this little spout at the bottom side, so gravity can pull that water, that distilled water, mixed with a little bit of oil and other things. And I'm just going to put that. I just put it right back in one time. Sometimes this one, the bottom slide, comes in just before the top one does. It makes it a little bit easier. You can line up one at a time. And it just slides in there. And you want that to be able to move easily so that if you have to tune up, you can just easily adjust that. You don't have to be fighting with it. And um, if yours is stuck, don't force it. Don't pull too hard because it can bend and twist that. And that's very expensive to get repaired. So, you know, you may want to... Uh, you can get what's called uh, penetrating oil. Put a few drops here, put a few drops there, and just kind of let it soak overnight. And then you could do it the next day if it's still not coming, because that's what they try, first of all, usually at, at um, repair shops. They'll put some penetrating oil there and kind of let it just sit and let that get down in there. And that, that penetrating oil just penetrates down in there and, and unfreezes, as they say, those, uh, those joints there. Now, for these other two, the first valve tuning slide, this, mine has this little nice little thumb ring right there, or thumb hook, and uh, I like mine to be able to move slowly. So I'm, I'm really a trombone player, so instead of using tuning slide grease, which is kind of gummy, uh, now most band directors will tell you use tuning slide grease, but I like to use uh, like slide cream for a trombone player, because I am a trombone player, and I, I like to be able to adjust the tuning. Like when you go hit your low C valves, I'm, I'm at low D, it's contrabitch, but low D, uh, I like to, I, you have to move that third valve slide out to get that in tuner, so it'll sound sharp. So um, I like it to move very freely, and I can move this first one very freely to get some notes in tune. Usually it's pulled in pretty far. But uh, on this third valve, when you play a low D or a low C sharp, um, and when you have to really press that, all like valve, it's a low note, there's all three valves, uh, it's nice to be able to move this easily just with a, just a movement of your hands. So what I use uh, is just trombotine or any kind of a slide, trombone slide cream, but it's trombotine. This is for trombone slides. And normally a trombone player would put just a little bit on just like I've done in the other places, uh, except they would spray water on it. We're not going to spray water. I just use this because this is not as uh, thick and gooey as your tuning slide grease. And uh, once you get that going, then you have an instrument that plays really nicely. Another thing, usually uh, when a, a brand new student line trumpet comes and you pull it out of the plastic, or if even if it's a used one, a lot of times they will give you a, uh, see if I can find one here, a 7C mouthpiece. It'll stay, it'll be stamped right on the mouthpiece right through there. It'll say 7C. And that's a very shallow, small uh, cup of a mouthpiece. And you won't get a very good tone with that. It's really hard. You can play high notes easier, uh, but the, the, be, the tone won't be good. And by tone, I mean there's a lot of buzz, a lot of uh, air, kind of a buzzy air sound with your tone. It's not a really thick, resonant sound. Uh, and I've got kind of big lips. I don't know if you notice that, but I've got big lips. My, that's why my band director, when I was in fifth grade, said, you need to play trombone because you've got these big lips and long arms. So I, I did that. I moved it because I, I didn't know what a trombone was at the time. I just kind of took her word for it. But uh, after playing and trying to teach other students trumpet, um, I swapped over to a 1C mouthpiece, which is a big, big mouthpiece. But you get a big, rich sound. If you ever find yourself playing lower notes a lot, like if you're a third trumpet player, I'm kind of a third trumpet player kind of a guy because i got big lips. I don't do really high, do well. When you got big lips like mine, high notes are more difficult to hit. And that's why you might be better suited for a, a trombone or a tuba or baritone. But um, I can just get a richer sound. And when you, uh, we're, we're going to get more into the, the, the lip buzz and all that stuff. But when you get your trumpet, or if you get a chance and they, you're selling, you're saying you're renting to own a trumpet uh, at the music store or wherever, um, if, it's, if the option is available, try to go for a 1C. 
because your tone will be so much better as a beginner and just get used to it. And high school players, even though some of them have small thin lips, uh, they recommend going with a, a 1C mouthpiece, just get that rich warm sound and you can build up the lip strength to be able to hit those high notes and they'll be nice and clear and resonant. Whereas a 7C mouthpiece is a bit small for when you want to have a big open rich tone. But um, you do want to take care of your instrument by wiping it off every time you finish with it. After you finish playing it, you want to just wipe off anywhere you've, you've touched the instrument you want to get those fingerprints off, and I use, they sell these at store, this is just uh, like felt, uh, but just any kind of a really soft cloth, sometimes a soft uh, washcloth, um, but I like to use something like this and wipe off all those fingerprints because your, your, the, the oils from your finger have salt and oil in it that can eat away at the finish of the trumpet, and if you'll take care of your instrument, it'll look really, really good for years and years to come. I've got a bass trombone that I purchased in 1983. It still looks really nice, and uh, and you just wipe off anywhere where it's where it's, your fingerprints are, and that finish will last you. Now a trumpet like this, even a student line trumpet, well uh, it can last you the rest of your life if you'll take care of it. Your valve guides may uh, wear out. This little you know, the things that popped into place on the inside, they may wear out, but you can have those changed. It's just a little Teflon, uh, nylon little piece right there that guides the valve and puts it in the exact right spot. Those may wear out. But if you'll keep your valves oiled, and uh, it will, this trumpet will last you, and you could play it in church and uh, all through how, all throughout high school. Just take care of it. Don't just protect it when you walk. Don't sling it around when you're walking. Don't don't hang it. Don't hold it like this and, and walk and swing like that. You want to protect it like a baby. Just kind of kind of keep it up close to your chest, where it'll be uh, uh, safe. And when you're sitting with it, if uh, don't. I know a lot of students, they will uh, actually put the trumpet down on the floor and kind of rest it on the bell and they'll hold it with one finger and or they'll just set it on the floor and somebody it's easy to knock over. Once it knocks over it may uh, bump one of these valves and, and uh, or they'll sometimes they'll, they'll bring the trumpet down and it'll hit the, uh, the front of their seat. This part right here will hit the front of the seat. I'm talking about this section right there and that third valve slide is connected to it and all of a sudden that third valve doesn't want to move because when you hit it like that, it uh, puts a crease in this uh, valve casing right there and then it restricts the movement of that third valve and that's bad. They'll just bring the trumpet, they'll slam it down, they'll get mad or at the end of the song they'll just pull their instrument down. Don't do that. Be careful with it. When you're not playing, you can either sit with it and rest position. I've got it on my, my right thigh right now and then when you're going for a long time, it's best to lay it straight down across your lap and you, with your hand on top of it in case somebody walks by and bumps it somehow. You want to kind of be aware of that. Make sure that you're uh, aware of your surroundings and who's walking around, who's rambunctious. You know, in, in fifth grade, beginning band, or sixth grade, whatever grade you start in, uh, sometimes people around you can be, you know, kind of hyperactive. So you want to just protect that, and uh, that trumpet will last you. And uh, don't let anybody um, abuse your instrument. If somebody starts to, to do something to your instrument or messes with it, let your band director know in just kind of a discreet way, and he'll help you take care of that. But uh, wipe it off, like I said, after you get through, empty out all the water. And when you oil the valves, like I was showing you, you want to oil the valves about once every week and a half. Uh, it depends on how much you play. Um, I've got a lot of students, some students, that will practice for hours a day. So they have to oil their valves like once a week. And the tuning slides, you can oil those uh, or grease them up about once every two to three weeks. And But you, you kind of, you get the way, of, when you're playing, when you feel like, the action is not as fast and smooth and uh, then you say ah you can feel when your valves are about to stick your valve should never just you be playing along and all of a sudden it sticks that means you don't know your instrument you need to get to where you know this instrument how how it feels when it's just freshly lubricated and because it's getting it gets frustrated if, you, if your valves start to get sticking and all like that and if they do you oil it and it sticks and oil and it sticks uh, then there's there's something new that's wrong with the instrument and you need to let your band director uh, or your private instructor know about that so that they can get that fixed because it shouldn't be a frustrating instrument or a frustrating experience. So take care of this instrument and it'll take care of you. And uh, thank you very much.